जय श्री कृष्ण नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून भक्त कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी जूनागढ़ के डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी द्वारा आयोजित इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी डिस्कोर्स ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज विषय पर आधारित वन डे नेशनल ई सिंपोजियम के फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन के चेयरपर्सन और द सी एस आई आर नेशनल एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट नागपुर महाराष्ट्र के एनर्जी एंड रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट डिवीजन के चीफ साइंटिस्ट एंड हेड डॉक्टर नितिन लाभ सेतवर सर इस सेशन के की नोट स्पीकर और बरहामपुर यूनिवर्सिटी के नेचुरल रिसोर्सिस मैनेजमेंट एंड जियो इंफॉर्मेटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट के प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डॉक्टर बी अंजन कुमार पुरुष इस सेशन के दूसरे की नोट स्पीकर और वीर नर्मद साउथ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी सूरत के डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स के प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर गौरांग रामी सर आज के सिंपोजियम के कन्वीनर प्रेरणा मूर्ति और भक्त कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी जूनागढ़ के डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी के अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर जय सी जाला सर इस सिंपोजियम के ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी मेरे छोटे भाई जैसे और मेरे कलीग डॉक्टर रुचिराज उपाध्याय सर यूनिवर्सिटी के फेसबुक पेज और यूट्यूब के माध्यम से पूरे देश में से हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए प्रोफेसर एजुकेशनलिस्ट रिसर्चर्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड सोशल वर्कर्स आप सबकी वर्चुअली उपस्थिति हमारे लिए गर्व की बात है और एज अ कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ टूडे सिंपोजियम आई माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर पराग देवानी आप सबको वंदन करता हूँ लिबरलाइजेशन प्राइवेटाइजेशन और ग्लोबलाइजेशन के बाद इंफॉर्मेशन एंड नॉलेज सोसाइटी का जो उदय होने के साथ साथ एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज भी बढ़ गए हैं वो हम सब जानते हैं जैसे कि क्लाइमेट चेंज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग पॉल्यूशन डेमेज इन ओजोन लेयर अनएक्सपेक्टेड सीजन साइकिल एसिड रेंज वगैरह देखने को मिल रहा है इन सभी इश्यू पर सोसाइटी में अलर्टनेस अवेयरनेस राइट टू सॉल्यूशन एंड सेल्फ डिसिप्लिन डेवलप हो उसी विचार से भक्त कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी के डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी द्वारा आज ये वन डे नेशनल ई सिंपोजियम आयोजित किया जा रहा है इस सिंपोजियम के फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन में वेलकम स्पीच के लिए मैं भक्त कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी जूनागढ़ के डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशल साइंस एंड सोशल वर्क के हाउस अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर जय सी झाला सर को आमंत्रित करता हूँ प्लीज सर थैंक यू पराग सर आज के हमारे इस राष्ट्रीय सिंपोजिया इंटर डिसिप्लिन डिस्कोर्स ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज के प्रथम सत्र में बिजरूप वक्तव्य के लिए उपस्थित अंजन पुष्टि सर डॉक्टर गौरांग रामी एवं सेशन के चेयरपर्सन के रूप में उपस्थित नितिन लाभ से तस्वर आप सबका मैं हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूँ प्रारंभ में ही मैं हमारे सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट एवं चेयरपर्सन सी से क्षमा याच पाता हूँ कि समय मर्यादा का ध्यान में रखते हुए मैं सिर्फ आपका संक्षिप्त ही परिचय दूंगा क्योंकि आप सब लोग अपने क्षेत्र के महारथी है और अगर मैं पूरा परिचय देने जाऊंगा तो समय कम पड़ जाएगा इसलिए केवल संक्षिप्त परिचय और वेलकम ही आपको करूंगा सबसे पहले आज के इस सेशन में वक्ता के रूप में उपस्थित डॉक्टर गौरांग रामी सर जो कि वर्तमान में अर्थशास्त्र विभाग वीर नर्मद दक्षिण गुजरात विश्वविद्यालय सूरत में प्रोफेसर और स्कूल ऑफ ग्रेजुएट स्टडीज मिंटन ऑफ स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी में सहायक प्रोफेसर के रूप में कार्यरत है डॉक्टर रामी ने 2018 से 20 के दौरान वीर नर्मद गुजरात विश्वविद्यालय सूरत में बाबा साहेब बी डॉक्टर बी आर आम्बेडकर अध्ययन केंद्र की अध्यक्षता भी की है उन्हें लग बीस वर्षो के अध्यापन और शोध का अनुभव है डॉक्टर रामी के पांच अर्थशास्त्र में डॉक्टर की डिग्री और मास्टर ऑफ फिलोसॉफी है अर्थशास्त्र में परास्नातक अर्थशास्त्र में विशेषज्ञता और औद्योगिक समाज शास्त्र में विशेषज्ञता के साथ समाज शास्त्र में परास्नातक है अर्थशास्त्र के स्नातक साथ ही साथ रामी सर विभिन्न ने विभिन्न सरकारी और गैर सरकारी संगठनों में एनजीओ द्वारा वित्त पोषित लगभग बारह शोध परियोजनाओं में अपनी विशेषक विशेषज्ञता प्रदान की है आईसीएसआर, ओएनजीसी, 
एन एन टी पी सी गुजरात सरकार द्वारा के संयुक्त तो उपक्रमों में उन्होंने कई ऐसे कार्यक्रम भी किए हैं सर मैं आपका इस संगोष्ठी में हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूं साथ ही साथ आज के हमारे दूसरे बीजरूप वक्ता बी अंजन कुमार पुष्टि साहब जो कि शिक्षा जगत से किस साल से जुड़े हुए हैं वो कई इंस्टीट्यूट में मेंबर है जैसे कि इमर्जिंग पोल्यूशन इन वाटर एंड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट यूनिवर्सिटो इंटरनेशनल हाइड्रोलिक प्रोग्राम मेंबर इन यूएन यूएनसीएन स्पेशल सर्वाइवल कमीशन वाइल्ड हेल्थ स्पेशलिस्ट ग्रुप एंड कमीशन साथ ही साथ वो कई प्रतिष्ठित जर्नल के एडिटर के रूप में भी कार्यरत हैं जैसे कि एसोसिएट एडिटर जर्नल ऑफ फूड एंड एग्रीकल्चर एंड एनवायरमेंट एडिटर एडिटोरियल बोर्ड मेंबर इंटरनेशनल जर्नल ऑफ वाटर रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट वर्तमान में कुमार अंजन कुमार पुष्टि सर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट एंड जियो इन्फॉर्मेटिक बेहरामपुर यूनिवर्सिटी बेहरामपुर उड़ीसा में एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एवं हेड के रूप में कार्यरत है उससे पहले उन्होंने कई संस्थाओं में कार्य किया है जैसे कि जुलाई 2007 से मार्च में जूनियर साइंटिस्ट गुजरात इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजिट डिजिट इकोलॉजी भुज में कार्य किया है सर आपका भी आपके रिसर्च के पसंद पसंदीदा विषयों में इको आ, इको इकोलॉजी एनवायरमेंट बायो केमिस्ट्री एवं कंजर्वेशन कन, बायोलॉजी है आपका भी मैं इस संगोष्ठी में हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूं और साथ ही साथ इस सेशन की जिस पर जिम्मेवारी है वो लाभ सेतेश्वर जी हमार जी आज हमारे साथ उपस्थित हैं हमारे लिए बेहद गौरवपूर्ण बात है कि ऐसे सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट हमारे साथ उपस्थित है डॉक्टर नितिन नितिन लाभ सेतेश्वर इज पी एच डी विथ थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स एक्सपीरियंस इन एनवायरमेंट एंड एनर्जी रिलेटेड रिसर्च ही हैज वर्क एज एस टी ए जे एस पी ए फेलो एंड विजिटिंग ओवरसीज रिसर्च एट एन आई एम एस चिकुबा जापान एंड विजिटिंग प्रोफेसर ऑफ क्यूस्का यूनिवर्सिटी सर आपका भी मैं हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूँ आपने कई रिसर्च पेपर भी लिखे लगभग वन सेवेंटी फाइव रिसर्च पेपर पब्लिकेशन हुए जिसको सिक्स थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड साइटेशन है एच इंडेक्स जीरो फोर्टी फोर है सर आप जैसे विद्वान व्यक्ति का हमारे साथ उपस्थित रहना और इस संगोष्ठी का चेयरपर्सन के रूप में उपस्थित रहना बेहद गौरव की पूर्ण बात है आपका मैं पुनः हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूं ज्यादा समय न लेते हुए डिजिटल माध्यम से जुड़े हुए आप सभी लोगों का मैं हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिवादन करता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच झाला सर फॉर योर वॉम वेलकम स्पीच अब ज्यादा समय न लेते हुए मैं आज के की नोट स्पीकर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर बी अंजन कुमार पुष्टि सर को विनती करूंगा कि वे अपना की नोट एड्रेस पेश करें प्लीज सर पुष्टि सर थैंक यू सो आई विल स्टार्ट द शेयर स्क्रीन ऑप्शन डायरेक्टली विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम Yeah, is the slides uh, visible? Yes, yes, sir. They are here. Sir, is it visible? Perfect. Uh, thank you, and later, I hope to have uh, having the virtual bias with uh, the learner colleagues from uh, Junagadh, uh, B Narmad, uh, sorry, Junagadh Narsimha Mehta University, and uh, from South Gujarat University, and uh, other other session chairman Nitin ji. Uh, well, uh, I'm sure Chandra Bhushan ji in the inaugural session would have uh, you know uh, addressed uh, many of the almost most of the issues on climate change science and policy and the india's preparedness and our position in the international forum however uh, looking into the audience and i am sure there are many students who may be uh, viewing us or maybe trying to have access to the 
uh, you know, like so. So for their mm -hmm. understanding, I have made uh, a presentation, which is a mix of a little technical and then uh, information based and with certain case studies that what we are trying to do in this area of the country. So uh, I will just proceed with uh, the basics of uh, climate change. If we look at the way uh, we uh, scientific fraternity have uh, consolidated the data set uh, on the, you know, uh, temperature based data almost from 1880 and it's quite apparent by now is that uh, uh, after 1960s after 1960s i mean uh, post industrial revolution we have been visualizing uh, an increase in the temperature anomaly i mean that is uh, ascribed to many greenhouse gases that is what has been leading to warming up the earth's atmosphere what we otherwise call as the global warming effect. And then the climate, yes, it is uh, changing due to such increase in the uh, temperature. And uh, there are several factors, uh, several gases that are responsible for that, what we otherwise call as the greenhouse gases, maybe carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor, uh, which are predominantly responsible for all this. Yes, we also have nitrous oxide and uh, chlorofluorocarbon. And uh, yeah, so the major role these gases which I have been doing is trapping the, uh, you know, radiating uh, the heat and uh, the visible light that is being transformed into the heat. So that's how the local atmosphere on the Earth's surface that is becoming warmer and warmer and having an array of uh, you know numerous ecological impacts. So ecological impacts, I do not uh, mean that it is only biological, but it is biophysical as well as socio-economical. And uh, some of the slides and subsequent slides should make it a uh, little clear. Now, this is how the higher proportion of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they are able to trap the radiation, uh, the solar radiation that hits on the Earth's surface and tries to escape, but they are not able to escape. So uh, under the capping, capping effect, all these gases, the lower atmosphere uh, gets warmed up and then the temperature increases and that's what drives the change in the climate. Now, this is little technical, but then it is a factual fact, which, which I have, uh, uh, you know, taken, borrowed, uh, I mean, extracted from the IPCC synthesis report, which clearly talks about the kind of energy balance we experience on Earth's surface. But then this is actually no more becoming balanced. It is actually getting imbalanced because there are the factors which used to be, which are responsible for trapping the heat radiation are increasing and their concentration also are increasing. Uh, the simple region is like the black carbon and then the soot particles, then the water vapor and then many other greenhouse gases. Now, notwithstanding with all this discussion, every, the history is, uh, uh, I mean, we know about the Los Angeles smog and uh, other uh, London smog, but then we also have been experiencing uh, incidents like Delhi smog. So uh, I'm not going to such uh, incident details. I, I'm sure I think Chandra Bhushanji might have already discussed about such things. Uh, what, how the urban areas and urban atmosphere has been getting impacted because of a cocktail of such chemicals in the lower atmosphere. Now, uh, what uh, drives all that is we have a specific residence time in air. Some of the greenhouse gases, they are carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and uh, you know methane, carbon monoxide, and tropospheric ozone. I'm not talking about the stratospheric ozone because stratospheric ozone is good for the Earth climate, Earth as a planet. But it is tropospheric ozone that is more uh, disastrous, having disastrous impact. So uh, this itself is an indication. Apparently, it indicates that uh, once they are released into the atmosphere for how many years they are going to have their role in the atmosphere. So whatever impact they are having, ecological impact, that is uh, going to be disastrous. And uh, having global warming and climate change are uh, uh, an subtle effect of all these gases accumulating in the atmosphere. Now, there are uh, some of the sources, the gases what I mentioned now are carbon dioxide, methane, chlorofluorocarbon, nitrous oxide, and tropospheric ozone. If we just take carbon dioxide as the effectiveness in trapping the heat, uh, heat which is radiating back, if we consider that as unity, we can understand that methane has a heating potential of 20 compared to carbon dioxide. 
chlorofluorocarbons are 10,000 compared to carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide 200 compared to carbon dioxide, and tropospheric ozone has 2,000. Now, from this, we need to actually have a paradigm shift in the way we talk climate science. Because we tend to somehow discuss, even in classrooms, about the role of carbon dioxide in trapping the heat. But uh, uh, less importance are always given to methane, the chlorofluorocarbon, nitrous oxide, and tropospheric ozone. If we look at the uh, recordings of all the international agreements, uh, such as uh, climate change conventions, UNFCC, uh, in Paris Climate Summit also, India has been vehemently uh, uh, emphasizing one thing, that the uh, uh, emission uh, greenhouse gas emission by India is not a luxury emission. That is because mo from our paddy field and, and uh, agricultural farms, uh, what is being released is methane, and from our livestock activity, what is being released is again methane, a majorly. Unlike other gases, what is being emitted from different, which is considered as a luxury emission by European countries. So that need to be, uh, you know, the students also need to be aware of such uh, intricate details. Now, if we look at uh, the number of disasters that we have uh, witnessed in nature that is one can surprisingly note that in 21st century the number has gone really high and one ca case study that i am going to present today is also about the odisha coast that also we are going to show some of the statistics yeah i'll uh, uh, go to the next one so why do we consider climate change as a problem is that uh, the proxy that we consider is sea level change so if we consider sea level change, the, uh, the data which is extracted from NASA uh, talks about clearly about the way it is changing again post-1960. Post-1960, particularly what we consider as the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and after that, it has been uh, a projectile has been always on the rise. And, uh, and there are different uh, theories as if uh, Earth's temperature increases by one degree or 1.5 degree or two degree how are the uh, scenarios going to be we will be discussing about uh, one by one in different case scenario now once the ice melts due to uh, global warming if the ice melts then exp uh, ocean expands so thereby sea level changes and next the thermal expansion is inevitable it is an inevitable impact uh, if uh, ice are melting or it is warming up now, who, who get impacted? Because uh, we feel that since we are a tropospheric, uh, sorry, we are a terrestrial species, we feel cyclones and disasters or something. We feel that we are the only species on earth they are getting impacted. But then there are many other species who do not have a voice. So they also get impacted, especially sea ice. When melting of ice uh, is reported, uh, imagine there are species which are pre uh, particularly using the sea ice for you know, uh, leaving, mating, sleeping and roosting and all that. So those those are the species, they are likely to get extinct. And once they are extinct, yes, they are wiped up. Now they will be enlisted as extinct in wild category uh, by International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. And we won't be able to get them back. So it is high time to act on such uh, uh, processes. Now, what happens? Why? Uh, <clears throat> The ice melting becomes an issue is some of the example that I will be giving as when it is uh, ice white color, it actually reflects back. It reflects back the heat. So that that that's one good thing about it. But on the contrary, we have seen soot particles or carbon, carbon material, then they absorb the heat. So that's the difference. That's how in city area, we get much warmer uh, climate compared to the coastal area. And the uh, imagery, satellite imagery, which talks about uh, during 19, 20, 30 years, 1981 to 2010, in 30 years, how much of ice coverage we have lost. The orange line talks about the historical records of ice coverage in Greenland. And that's what says how much of sea ice has melted down. Plus, uh, because of lost, uh, loss of uh, sea ice cover, uh, we are not able to radiating back the heat radiation that we once used to do it. So that's another impact we have. Now we are talking about, uh, I'm sure the session chairman Nitinji is going to, you know, substantiate many of the things that uh, India's uh, commitment, we have nationally determined uh, com uh, 
you know emission standards and then we also determined that we will make it uh, land degradation neutral by 2030 and carbon neutral by 2070 but then this is all the targets will be achievable with small small act that we are going to do we are going to act upon now why it is a problem because there are many species i am least bothered about what is happening to homo sapiens because perhaps homo sapiens human beings are the only species on the earth who has caused this climate change or global warming impact. All the emissions are not by any wild animal, rather it is by the anthropogenic activities of uh, human beings. So I'm going to show as uh, the impacts on some of the species who do not have voice, they cannot vote for, they do not have voting rights. Yes, but they are the largest uh, the species with highest impact. Now they go extinct when their habitats are being degraded or their habitats are being destroyed because of the disasters, because of the fire, because of the melting of glaciers, because of repetitive flooding and all that. Now, so we talk about the increase in temperature. If we, uh, I mean, there was a paper which, which was published in the science journal, international journal science. I have taken some of the aspects from that. If there is a 0 0.5 degree increase in global temperature, what, what can happen? What can happen? The coral bleaching, what we consider is the impact of climate change might increase by you can see 1.5 to 2 degree temperature increase that means 0 0.5 degree temperature increase 99 percent of the corals will get bleached and then species loss yes 1.5 degree centigrade how much of species are percentage loss is being already uh, you know uh, there so and then drought the periodicity of drought and the impact we have so it is something like uh, 410 million people in different urban agglomerations are going to be impacted due to drought. That could be hydrological drought, that could be economic drought, or that could be agricultural drought. Drought of any form. And rise in sea level, 1.5 degree we have, and then when it increases by 2 degree. And this is what, uh, I mean, some of the uh, reports of WWF also substantiate such uh, findings. Now, who are responsible for that? as I have already said, human beings, but which country has how much proportion? So uh, maybe 50 least developed countries are thought to have contributed only 1% of the greenhouse gases, whereas the other countries, that's what uh, uh, my colleagues, when we are discussing, uh, like uh, uh, Chandra Bhusanji has already talked about, we should not have a distinction of uh, developed countries or developing countries is absolutely right. I, I subscribe to his, uh, I buy his agreement views because uh, there is nothing like uh, uh, developed and developing it is all about lifestyle because even in developing countries we are rap rapidly adopting the western culture and lifestyle that once upon a time western culture are, uh, were very proud of having materialistic st standard of living so that we are now practicing and having a lot of Anjan, impacts so this is what Anjan, An yeah Anjan sir, aapki slide share nahi ho rahe. Ek, first Ek second sir. slide, slide pe hai, sir. नहीं वो दिखाई दे रहे हैं लेकिन नेक्स्ट बाय नेक्स्ट नहीं हो रहे हाँ मूविंग एक्चुअली यस नाउ वी नाउ वी कैन सी ओके फुल स्क्रीन कर दीजिए सर ये फाइव आई थिंक फुल स्क्रीन में अगर प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो सेम नॉर्मल मोड में जाऊँ मैं अभी तक फुल स्क्रीन पे नहीं था एक्चुअली नाउ नहीं अभी फुल स्क्रीन पे नहीं Okay, but is it moving if I go like this? Uh, yes, yes. You, yeah, now you are at 17, 18. Yeah, that's right. It's moving now. Fine. Yeah. I think you can I go I think ahead. some network issues, sir. So maybe I can go like this. Yeah. So what we are talking about, the lifestyle changes, we, we can feel like where do we stand? Although it is a very old reporting, one US baby, its ecological footprint was estimated somewhere around like uh, if we talk about uh, <coughs> other countries, see, so it is Italian, Brazilian and Indian, 35 Indian babies that uh, the kind of ecological footprint we have, 35 Indian babies equivalent to one US baby. But uh, this being a very old report, we need to check the latest ones. So some of the latest reports which talks about that because of our activity, you know, uh, the uh, bio capacity of earth has, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is the kind of uh, pressure and resource demand we have. We actually need 1.7 planet, 1.7 earth to support the requirements, resource requirements of all the individuals surviving in one planet. And the, even if we talk about the overdraft of resources, that uh, resources, what we have for annual budget that we are consuming within uh, maybe by July or August month. 
that is some of the recent studies which talks about that means we are actually making a overdraft of four months in terms of resource availability and resource use so we are drafting overdrafting the resource from the second year next year to the previous year by four months that means how much of resource scarcity we are going to have and these are all because of the lifestyle changes now that's where in the paris climate change 2015 uh, that gap path to the sustainable development goal out of 17 sustainable development goal that we have adopted and yeah, by united nation member states at unfcc i mean paris uh, cop 15 i suppose so out of that sustainable development goal 13 14 and 15 are uh, intricately related to you know uh, a human well being and that is directly related to resource we use and the action we have and the impacts like uh, climate change and global warming but nonetheless all the 17 goals are interlinked. So even our Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and Millennium Development Goal has uh, put the central dogma as the human well-being. Because if it is human well-being is at uh, stake, then all the stakeholders will come into action and ultimately it will ensure that the biosphere is being protected. If we uh, ensure that only ecological protection is there, perhaps the stakeholders do not may not show interest. That's what is the uh, you know the thinking. So we talk about global changes, but the impacts are always local. Now, what is happening uh, locally? Before looking at that, if we look at history, uh, the whatever five mass extinction event we have witnessed, we often talk about that we are undergoing sixth mass extinction event in the Anthropocene. But we already have five mass extinction events started with 443 million years ago to as uh, recent as 65 million years ago. All the five mass extinction event, the hypothesis was the global change in environment and elevated carbon dioxide level and climate change. But then those mass extinctions were all due to natural processes. They were not due to anthropogenic impacts or anthropogenic activities. But those elevation in carbon dioxide, which, were, which happens to be a natural cycling process in nature across millions of years in, along a geological time scale, now that is becoming in a human time scale in short span of time. That's what uh, a cause of worry. So what are the ecological impact we have is like uh, uh, the species are getting impacted through temperature, then uh, rainfall pattern are changing, then pH in the system are getting impacted, right? So many species, they have to be under stress, ecological stress, because they have a certain biokinetic zone and they have already a specific zone of tolerance for pH or for temperature or for salinity or for relative humidity, for moisture or for rainfall or whatever. But then if it is exceeding or if it is decreasing, then they have to uh, adapt themselves. And then to what extent they will adapt? Because there has to be, a, there is a plasticity in ecological terms. We use it as phenotypic plasticity. But then if we reach the tipping point, the way it is happening now, the process is happening now, we are reaching the tipping point. When we are reaching the tipping point, the plasticity also exits. So there are change in metabolic rate, change in behavior, availability of food, and breeding success in many species. Now, what is happening? How the timeline is changing? Either population distribution is changing or breeding uh, timing is changing. Like uh, many people have uh, might have observed the flowering uh, timing of uh, phenology of the plants, flowering plants. Sometimes in some cases it is delaying and some cases it is advancing. So that's what uh, the impact many people have, might have seen. And many people also talk about, you know, mass nesting of many species. If uh, So sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, earlier it used to be, I mean, mass nesting of sea turtles, it used to be in December and January. Now mass nesting has been delayed up to by March or April. Even if it is sporadic nesting, all along the Gujarat coast, when I was working there, all along the Gujarat coast, we have been noticing mass nesting of sea turtles. But then it is getting delayed. The event that used to be happen during December, January or February, now it is happening during uh, February, March and April. The sim similarly, many breeding cycles of many of the birds, they are also getting impacted. And it is not only breeding cycle, but range is also getting changed. Many species, they are expanding in the range or they are shrinking by the range because the concept of, you know, generalist and specialist species comes into picture. So due to climate change, who can survive better? A specialist ones or the generalist ones and again it depends the specialist one also has a specific biokinetic zone and the generalist one also has a specific biokinetic zone 
so that's that's becomes altogether more interesting like so that is how we have the migration pattern earlier migrations or earlier breeding or late migration or late breeding people who visit uh, bharatpur bird sanctuary or chilka they will uh, i mean agree with my view that uh, used to visit during uh, you know uh, november december now they will find migrating birds coming late to the wetland by december january or february also as delayed as february so that's what even change in clutch size in case of birds clutch size there is a shift in clutch size because number of egg laid in a, a particular uh, nesting cycle <coughs> Now, there are certain, I have gone through the literature and tried to dig out as what can be, uh, you know, uh, discussed here is some of the population dynamics, how they are changing. Many researchers have uh, established the fact, like uh, in case of grey heron in UK, emperor pigeon or rock upper pigeons in Campbell Island, puffins in USA, the population is getting impacted largely due to climate change. So it's climate change, though it is a uh, long term phenomenon, but what is uh, the variable they are being taken for climate change is the temperature right or the timing of flowering plant or the availability of food and so on and even the migration migration pattern even it is a migratory bird and root all the habitats if they are getting impact, impacted due to climate change we can say that the population is getting impacted whether the effect is in its native native home range or the effect or the impact is in its migratory uh, place so both are impacting the species in an equal way and the impact is cumulative. So that's how I talk about the phenotypic plasticity, whether it is range expansion or shrinking of the range or timing of the biological activity, either delayed or advanced. And there are certain some of the uh, studies undertaken in states, United States of America, which talks about how the range expansion or range shrinking in different species uh, it has been ascribed to uh, climate change impacts. So variables are many, like uh, loss of forest cover, wildfire, temperature, increase in temperature, rainfall pattern, relative humidity, soil moisture conditions, and so on. So what I talked about, economic drought is one, but we talked about, we talk about meteorological drought or hydrological drought or agricultural drought. Yes, they are all closely related with, uh, uh, you know, change in the home range or change in the habitat pattern by many species in the biosphere. Now, many species, even if uh, there is a 15 to 20 days advancement in the you know biological activity that's a huge 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 impact on a species like a small birds and uh, the migrating path if they are getting impacted due to habitat degradation again as a collateral impact of climate change that's again a cumulative impact on the birds so they cannot be just ignored and all these things need to be considered while having a designing different policy decision. So that's how uh, uh, to summarize in the few slides, we uh, think that, uh, I mean, uh, what will happen if there is a 0 0.5 degree temp increase in the temperature, but even a 0 0.5 degree increase in temperature could have a range expansion and range shrinkage or could have impact on the migratory pathway, could have impact on uh, periodicity of natural disasters. Yes, we, we have been carrying out some of the case studies in the Odisha coast, now along Ganjam and Puri coast. And we have seen that uh, uh, since 1999 to 2021, these are the uh, cyclones uh, that has hit the Odisha coast, especially Ganjam and Puri coast. And we are trying to uh, examine the impact of such cyclonic uh, the disasters and on the nesting behavior. Uh, ecological behavior of some of the raptors, which are the apex predators in the ecosystem. So if one uh, wants to examine the impact on uh, ecological health, if you consider raptor, that, that uh, is sufficient for assessing the whole ecosystem because they are the apex predators. Now, what is happening? We have seen the nest site selection by raptor species. I mean, you would be surprised that 61% of the species are now, 61% of the nest are artificial nesting. Only 39 is natural. That means the natural nesting trees have been lost by repeated heating of the coast by cyclone storms and disasters. And we have taken one species as indicator as white-bellied sea eagle. And in that case, it is quite surprising. Much more disastrous to understand, very surprising is that 85% of the nest, what we have observed along the coast, are artificial nesting sites. 
may be towers, may be buildings, or maybe tall watchtowers and so on. And the natural trees where it is nesting is only 15%. So when I consider artificial, predominantly they are telecommunication towers. So uh, the mobile mobile phone towers. Now, this is a casuarina equitifolia tree. Now, because of the disasters, if it is getting uprooted, they don't find any other site uh, for building nest. So ultimately they are dependent on the telecommunication towers. Now, if you go back to the earlier slide, it says that 85% of the nesting is on telecommunication uh, uh, towers. And that's actually a very uh, precarious situation we have. Yes, the study is still ongoing and we will be having uh, a clarity on other species also at the end of the uh, study. Now, what is happening? This is a uh, you know satellite imagery of uh, this one area which has got impacted by uh, the all this uh, 12 or 13 uh, incidences of cyclones in the last 20 years <clears throat> and you will find how this area has become open one which once upon a time used to be a very dense forest although it is a uh, forest represented by casuarina equisitifolia trees and coastal plants but then they used to act as windshield as well as a natural nesting site for many raptor species now raptors do not, are not able to find suitable location so they are going inland and they are being dependent on the telecommunication towers for their nesting so the onus lies on us the owners do not lie on the species which are getting impacted. The onus lies on earth because of whose activity it is all getting impacted. Now, government, there are many key players. Government who can uh, enact laws and policy that reduce the impact of greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, if I see, we are there is no dearth of uh, legislations and policies. Only uh, there is lack of implementation, lack of willingness to implement with word and spirit. The way United States of America has worked off from the UNFCC uh, agreement that it clearly indicates that we only want our, you know, a personal interest to be satisfied. If it is not for my national interest, I will not look for it. That is what one of the learned distinguished uh, colleagues in the uh, <clears throat> virtual dice was opining earlier. Now, business, yes, uh, we can have business as usual but then without jeopardizing the interest and the requirement of the resource for the next generation we can all make choice in our own life lives but then by making a sustainable lifestyle and carbon neutral lifestyle and we also use our voice to let the business and government to know that yes we want them to act quickly as quickly as possible to reduce their climate uh, their impact on climate change. So the target of making <coughs> the globe, I mean, land degradation neutral by 2030 and carbon neutral by 2070, it's not a very long target. It's just like this, uh, two decades we will pass or 10, de uh, 10 years we will pass and we will reach 2030. But then we have very nice time to bring in a change in behavior. So once there is a behavioral change, then we have achieved 70% of our target. The next 30% will be only reorganizing our priorities. I think that is all I had to discuss. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, all my colleagues in the uh, virtual dice who have shared uh, the screen with me. Thank you so much. Ah. And I'm I'm Thank sorry you. for the te technical snag because of which there was the screen was not moving. I'm sorry for it. Uh, no, no problem, sir. <laughs> Technology ka advantage bhi hai, disadvantage bhi bhi hai. <laughs> Wo hum log jante hai. Uh, Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your uh, remarkable and unforgettable speech and session. Uh, now I request. Uh, uh, Professor Dr. Gaurang Ramis to deliver his speech, Department of Economics, Virnarmad, South Gujarat University, Surat. Please, sir, Gaurang Ramis, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pareg, Parag Devani. Uh, I think screen is visible to you. Hello. Not yet.
स्क्रीन इज नॉट विजिबल सर नो वी कैन सी ओके yeah now it is visible no yeah, i think it's coming now yeah just wait for a moment okay yes we can see okay fine so uh, uh thank you very much uh, for the organizer for providing me uh, this opportunity uh respected uh, session chair uh, dr nitin lab labsetwar and the organizer dr uh, J B Jala sir, head uh, department of sociology, for uh, giving me this opportunity to express a uh, few of my views on uh, economic impact of climate change, a uh, couple of issues and concerns. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Anjan has made my life uh, slightly easy, uh, but uh, I think I'm going to restrict myself uh, only to. uh you know make a presentation on climate change and its economic impact at globally and cons considering uh, indian economy uh, as we all know i think uh, united nations have defined uh, climate change uh, it refers to long term shift in temperatures and uh, weather patterns uh, now as we know this shift may be natural uh, such as through variations in the solar solar cycle but since 1800 human activities have been the main driver of uh, climate change uh, preliminarily uh, due to a burning of fossil uh, fossil fuel uh, which include uh, coal oil and the gas so i think uh, burning fossil fuel generates uh, greenhouse gas emissions that act like a blanket wrapped around the earth uh, trapping the sun's heat and rising temperatures so i think these are the technical aspects which Uh, all of us are aware about it and the example of greenhouse gas emission uh, that are causing climate change include carbon carbon dioxide and uh, methane i think dr anjan has uh, rightly mentioned this point in his presentation so uh, greenhouse gas concentrations are at their highest level in 2 million years and emission continues to rise Uh, as a result the earth is now about 1.1 degree warmer than it was in the late 1800 and uh, it, it was noted that the last decades that is uh, during 2011 to 2020 was the warmest on the record so uh, many people think climate change mainly means uh, warmer temperature but temperature rises is only the beginning of the story because the earth is a system where everything is connected uh, changes in one area can influence uh, changes in all other areas so the consequences of the climate change now include among others that is uh, intense droughts weather scarcity uh, water scarcity uh, severe fire rising sea level uh, flooding melting polar ice or uh, catastrophic storm and the declining uh, biodiversity uh people are experiencing climate change in uh, diverse ways uh, like climate change can affect our health ability to uh, grow food housing safety and work and uh, other things so, so some of us are already more vulnerable to uh, climate impacts uh, as uh, dr anjan has mentioned that some of the small islands uh, they were highly affected with the uh, climate change so uh, people living in small island nations and uh, other developing countries uh, conditions like sea level rise and the salt water intrusion have advanced to the point where whole communities have have had to relocate and protected dro uh, prote protected droughts are putting people at risk of famine so un has uh, you know predicted that in the future the number of climate refugees is expected to uh, rise uh, every increase in a global warming global warming that matters and uh, uh, that has also been uh, discussed in the previous uh, presentation but i think the most uh, important document or the report that we have uh, as far as concern of uh, you know uh, climate change and its economic uh, impact Uh, that has came in 2006 that is 
the Stern report and the Nordhaus model. So in 2006, the British government was the first to commission an economist uh, to draft the report on climate change. Uh, it chose the World Bank's former chief economist, uh, Nicola Stream, and the result was around 700-page document that has become reference uh, on the subject. So the important you know, point from that report is uh, greenhouse gas emissions are the biggest mistake that the world market has uh, ever seen. So in short, the main conclusion of the Stream report is that uh, we need to invest the we need to invest the equivalent of 2% of the global GDP to mitigate the impacts of uh, climate change. And a similar kind of uh, observation we can found from uh, an American economist, William Nordhaus, uh, who received a Nobel Prize in economics in 2018 with uh, Paul Romer <laughs> for introducing climate change into a long-term uh, macroeconomic analysis. Uh, so very quickly, what are the causes and effects of the climate change? The causes are, uh, as we know, rapid industrialization, energy use, uh, agriculture, some of the agricultural practices, deforestation, uh, consumer practices, so livestock, transport, uh, resource extraction and pollution. And the effect that we observe that is rising temperature, uh, rising sea level, uh, unpredictable uh, weather patterns, increase in the extreme uh, weather events, land degradation, uh, loss of wildlife and bio biodiversity, uh, which we have seen in the previous uh, presentation. So uh, what are the main social impact of the climate change? That is, uh, it displaces the people, uh, increased poverty, loss of livelihood, hunger, malnourishment, increased risk of diseases and global food and uh, water shortage. Uh, if we specifically focus on social and economic impact of uh, climate change, then uh, it has resulted in uh, relocation of the whole towns, uh, shrinking productivity of uh, harvest, uh, prices of basic uh, foodstuff and consumer goods will rise, uh, extreme metropolitical phenomenon will cause uh, widespread uh, poverty, uh, disease will spread due to higher temperature, uh, there is a possibility of fresh water will be in short supply in some of the areas. Uh, more wars to gain access uh, to uh, limited resources. Uh, loss to the capacity to work due to the heat. Uh, this is very, very important for a country like India. And I'm going to discuss some of the estimates on this also. That how much amount of mandates are going to be lost due to uh, you know, uh, increase in the temperature. Uh, the cost of adapting coastal coastal areas uh, to, to rising uh, sea levels also. So, uh, which are the economic impact of the climate change? That average uh, real GDP loss by 2015. Uh, I think a, a, a entire world is going to, you know, loss in their GDP. <laughs> Where uh, some variations here and there. But I think uh, Africa, uh, Middle East, uh, Latin America, these are the uh, you know zones where they are going to lost at a greater amount uh, in their uh, GDP. Even in Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific, it has uh, estimated that there is a loss of two point six six percent in their uh, GDP. Now, uh, uh, Moody's analytics did. Uh, uh, some data analysis in 2019 uh, focused on the economic impact of the climate change. So uh, what they did, the research looked at the four uh, different scenarios. That is uh, entailing temperature increase of 1%, 1.9%, 2.4% uh, and 4.1% up, uh, up to 2100. So uh, what, what they have estimated, the estimated impact of the 4%, uh, you know, 4 degree centigrade uh, temperature increase on real GDP by 2048. And, and if you look at the country like India, India, Russia, and the China, they are the greater losers. Their GDP is going to reduce by almost two and a, I mean, India's uh, real GDP is going to reduce almost two and a half percent 
if temperature is on an average if temperature is increased by 4 degree plus centigrade so global economic damage is expected to around uh, 54 trillion in 2100 20 uh, 2100 uh, under 1.5 degree centigrade warming scenario while if it is 2 degree centigrade would you know entail a cost of around 69 uh, trillion dollar now this is specifically for the labor uh, sector that how global warming hit to the indian uh, heavy labor sector so uh, the, this uh, information uh, shows uh, annual loss of the work hours uh, in the outdoor heavy labor industry by a uh, global warming scenario uh, where <coughs> like 2 degree and 4 degree centigrade so in india Uh, which still has a large heavy labor sector uh, even uh, i think the chair, chair chairman of the session has already mentioned in the auto- <coughs> automobile sector so those sectors are uh, heavy labor sector uh, this could entail the loss of equivalent of i think 434 billion work hours annually if the globe uh you know should warm by 4 degree centigrade and uh, this is a very recent uh, publication in 2022 now if we talk about share of the cumulative uh, co2 emission by uh, geographic region uh, during 1850 to 1990 and 1850 to 2017 if you look at the you know the first chart uh, i think europe and the united states uh they, they were on a very uh, higher percentage share but if we talk about you know the changes during 1990 to 2017 uh, they have a reduction whereas a uh, country like china india and the rest of the world uh, their uh, co2 emission is uh, in uh, their share uh, of co2 emission is increased uh, significantly uh if we talk about actual co2 emission by geographic region during uh, 1950 to 2017 uh, almost similar story we can observe uh, uh united states and europe have a declining trend whereas india china and the rest of the world has a uh, increasing trend uh, during the reference uh, time period and this was the study carried out by the hamilton project uh, broking at the stanford university uh now if we see the four important you know quadrants of the uh, sea level rise and the cyclone uh, specifically in india so a uh, temperature projection as i have already uh, discussed that average temperature rise during 1901 to 2018 that is 0.7 degree uh, centigrade but projection average temperature rise over india by uh, 2100 over a uh, 1976 to 2005 the average temperature increase was 4.4% uh, you know for 4.4 degree centigrade uh, changes in the rainfall that has also observed like uh, summer monsoon that is june to september rainfall has declined uh, by 6% uh, during 1951 to 2015 uh, there are more frequent dry spells like 27% a uh, higher during 19 uh, 1981 to uh, during 1981 to 2011 relative to 1951 to uh, 1980 uh, sea level rise is the major concern for uh, you know country because half of, half of the country has a coastline like from uh, gujarat to uh, west bengal if we see uh, that is a half of the country ha- having a a uh, coastal line so sea level rise in the north indian uh, ocean uh, occurred at the rate of 1.0.6 to 1.75 mm per year during 1874 to 2004 and the projection is rise, rise in nio by uh, 300 mm by t- uh, 2100 over average of 1986 to uh, 2005 period similarly there were a lot of incidents of tropical uh, cyclones also now uh, if we largely focus on the you know fossil fuel uh, that is dirty but necessary that was said uh, wo- worldwide per capita co2 emission by fuel type in 2020 now if we focus on the coal and the 
you know, like coal and the gas. And if you club these uh, two, like uh, 33.8 and 22.8 percent. So uh, these are the data taken from the our world in data. Uh, coal and the gas combined amount to more than half of the world's current energy production. So still, you know, we are in search of finding alternatives for uh, energy production like wind energy or uh, many other, you know, alternatives we are trying. But still in 2020, 20, I think more than 50% uh, energy production comes from the uh, coal and the gas. So especially the bigger economies are still largely reliant on the fossil fuel for their uh, energy needs. And we need to, you know, uh, like uh, concentrate on this at a greater extent to reduce the magnitude or the intensity of the uh, climate change. Now, if we talk about G7 nations spends more on uh, fossil fuel than the green energy. And this was the data during January 2020 to March uh, 2021. That is public money committed, you know, to forms of energy in G7. So, you know, they have spent like G7 countries have spent $189 billion on fossil fuel. When it compares to the clean energy, they spent around $147 billion. So this also shows, you know, still, uh, uh, you know, e even developed nations like G7 or so, they are focusing more on uh, fossil fuel, which include, you know, coal, coal gas and uh, I, I think in the last part, I'm going to uh, focus that whether it is possible to halt the climate change and boost the economy. So uh, according to the World Commission on the Economy and Climate Change, uh, their report in 2018, in this report, they built a more uh, resi resilient, uh, beneficial growth model for people. We must accelerate the structural transformation in five key import key economic sector. Number one, that is clean energy system. That is uh, decarbon decarbonization of the energy system uh, coupled with the decentralized digitized electrification uh, technology could give a billion more people access to uh, modern energy services. Uh, we need to think on smarter urban developments that is uh, more compact, connected, and coordinated cities uh, would save around 17 billion US dollar by uh, 2050 as stimulate economic growth by improving access to work and housing. There is a requirement of sustainable land use, a, a switch to a more sustainable farming methods combined with you know strict forestry protection uh, could generate economic benefit of around. Uh, two billion dollar per year then a uh, smart water management i think in most of the urban areas and in smart cities it has been on focus uh, in areas with water shortage a uh, gnp could fall by up to six percent in 2050 this could be prevented by making more efficient use of water through technological improvements and uh, investment in public uh, infrastructure and the last uh, strategic, uh, uh, you know, the structural sector that is a circular industrial economy. So today around 95% of the value of the material uh, from plastic packaging up to $120 billion a year uh, is lost after the first use. So we need to think on, you know, reusable uh, plastic and the alternative of plastics also. So uh, the policies that encourage more uh, circular and efficient use of the materials could improve global economy activity and uh, reduce a uh, waste and the uh, pollution. So uh, thank you very much. I think I am in time in my presentation. And if there are any uh, questions, comments, or the suggestions, uh, they are most welcome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gaurang Rami sir, for your uh, humorous and uh, knowledgeable speech. Your speech, uh, the researchers or young sociologists, ko khas karke, 
फ्यूचर में भी एक इंस्पिरेशन देगी ऐसा हमारा विश्वास है वंस अगेन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर अब मैं आज के इस सेशन के चेयरपर्सन डॉक्टर नितिन दाप सेतवर सर को रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि वो चेयरपर्सन के रूप में अपना वक्तव्य यहाँ हमको प्रदान करें प्लीज सर Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, all once again, uh, Dr. Devani, Dr. Nala, and the very distinguished uh, uh, speaker on this occasion. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I would like to compliment the organizers, and uh, especially for this uh, organizing this, uh, you know, like uh, event. And I'm calling it event because the word they have chosen is one is interdisciplinary. Okay, which is a key thing when it comes to the climate change. And second, also, I like that they are calling it a discourse. Okay, because it's it's not only the scientific, uh, you know, like or technical. It has it needs to be called to the discourse. So uh, many compliments. So it was very beautifully designed, I would say, and uh, uh, the honourable speakers have done such a wonderful justice. Uh, Dr. Anjan uh, Prusty has uh, introduced the topic with the very reliable and giving excellent account of various causes actually which are contributing to climate change. Okay. Uh, very important to sensitize also that uh, <clears throat> what is happening, where are we heading to, what are the different causes. Because we think that only the coal-based power plant is getting a little bit of damage, and the global warming is getting a little bit of damage, and the temperature is rising. Uh, that's all. It's not going to happen much more. But he has given an excellent account of such a widespread impact of climate change, which will actually touch uh, practically every aspects of life. Okay. Uh, he spoke about the biodiversity. And he also tried to explain to them that it's not that the temperature will rise or change. Will change, will change, will change. The changes we are seeing. क्योंकि हम लोग अभी ग्लोबल वार्मिंग से क्लाइमेट चेंज की तरफ आ गए हैं और उसको उन्होंने बहुत अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन uh, किया हुआ है. उन्होंने कुछ मास एक्सटिंक्शन एपिसोड भी बताए हुए हैं और अभी मैं कुछ बहुत इम्प्रेसिव वो देख रहा था शॉर्ट मूवीज यूएन समिट में और वो यही बताती हैं कि ये भी पॉसिबल है क्लाइमेट चेंज की वजह से सो मेनी कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स एंड हार्टफुल थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर अनिल जस्टी जी देन फाइनली स्पोक अबाउट द कार्बन न्यूट्रलिटी प्रोफेसर गौरांग रामी जी को मैं कॉम्प्लीमेंट दूंगा क्योंकि आज ये हो गया कि हम लोग मैं जैसे इन्वायरमेंटल इंस्टीट्यूट में काम करता हूं तो वहां पे एक जब तक हम किसी भी इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट को या इन्वायरमेंटल इश्यू को एक इकोनॉमिक या क्वांटिफाइड नहीं कर पाते हैं तो बड़ा मुश्किल होता है पॉलिसी मेकर्स को कन्विंस करने के लिए तो उन्होंने बहुत क्रेडिबल डेटा के साथ में बहुत ईजी लैंग्वेज में एक्सप्लेन किया कि अगर हम उसको क्वांटिफाई करना चाहें और इकोनॉमिक टर्म्स में देखना चाहें तो कितना सीरियस ये इश्यू है एंड देन ही मूव ऑन द सोशल एस्पेक्ट्स लाइक रिफ्यूजीज क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली हम लोग को इकोनॉमिक एस्पेक्ट देखने हैं हमारा सर्वाइवल देखना है देन ही आल्सो टॉक्ड अबाउट द प्रायोरिटीज ऑफ डेवलप कंट्रीज ओके एंड आई आल्सो लाइक देयर आर ऑप्शंस टू होल्ड दिस क्लाइमेट चेंज सो आई प्रोफ्यूसली थैंक ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स टू बोथ द स्पीकर्स फॉर in fact i am sure they met in the morning here when we started the session but they could uh, they could design the session such a beautiful way that it was more than convincing i'll take just 5 minutes to uh, more 5 minutes uh, to explain what we uh, you know like uh, do that you know, how to convince the people especially mujhe bataya gaya tha ki kuch uh, students bhi hain yahan par Can you confirm if you can see the slide? I can't. Uh, it's uploading probably. So, I'll take two or four or five minutes for the student. I'll take a little bit to convince them. Although, it's very good. Both of the speakers have used it. So, I'll take a little bit to convince them. Although, it's very good. Both of the speakers have used it. I think it's still processing. Okay, if it takes time, I think I'll I'll just forget it. Okay, no problem. I'll just tell you that uh, what we need to sensitize our uh, youngsters today is that uh, 
अभी जैसे हम लोगों ने बात की थी कि पहला तो ये होता है कि एनर्जी बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूटर है और स्टूडेंट ने ये समझना चाहिए कि एक हमारे जो स्पीकर्स हैं उन्होंने हमको ये बताया हुआ है कि आज हम देखते हैं कि सोलर और रिन्यूएबल का हम लोगों ने हंड्रेड गीगा का एक टारगेट इंडिया ने अकम्पलिश कर लिया है जो हमारे प्रोजेक्शन उसको ऐसा देख के लगता है कि आ, हम लोग क्यों बात कर रहे हैं कि तीस साल बाद ये होगा पचास साल बाद ये होगा जिस स्पीड से हम लोग सोलर एनर्जी की तरफ जा रहे हैं बायो एनर्जी की तरफ जा रहे हैं रिन्यूएबल की तरफ जा रहे हैं ये प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाना चाहिए बट उसका एकमात्र कारण है कि हम जितना एडिशन कर रहे हैं क्लीन एनर्जी का सोलर का और रिन्यूएबल का उतना ही ज्यादा हमारा एनर्जी कंजम्पन बढ़ते जा रहा है तो आज मान लीजिए थाउजेंड वाट और हम पांच सौ गीगा वाट थाउजेंड गीगा वाट और पांच सौ सोलर से करना चाहते हैं ऐसा लगता है कि दस साल बाद हम थाउजेंड गीगा सोलर से कर लेंगे लेकिन तब हमारी जो रिक्वायरमेंट है वो दो हजार हो जाएगी टू थाउजेंड तो जो स्टैटिस्टिक्स आपको दिए गए हैं वो ये तय है कि अगले 20-30-40 साल तक भी हमको काफी हद तक फॉसिल फ्यूल यूज करना पड़ सकता है क्योंकि हमारी एनर्जी डिमांड बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ रही है अब जहां तक एनवायरमेंट की जो हम लोग एसिमिलेटिव कैपेसिटी बोलती है बोलते हैं अब वो नहीं रही ओके हमारे पास और ज्यादा सीओ डालने के लिए दूसरी गैसेज डालने के लिए नहीं है नेचर बहुत स्ट्रांग है नेचर अपने आप को एडजस्ट करता है नेचर बहुत सा एमिशन और पोल्यूशन एक्सेप्ट कर सकता है लेकिन ऐसा लगता है कि ह्यूमन काइंड जो है उससे कॉम्पीट कर रहा है कि आप इतने गीगा टन कर सकते हैं हम और ज्यादा करने का कोशिश करेंगे ओके तो उसमें नेचर का जो बिगड़ेगा उससे ज्यादा हमारा बिगड़ने वाला है तो ये तय है कि हम लोग को नई जनरेशन को सेंसिटाइज करना है और कार्बन फुटप्रिंट पे मैं बहुत ज्यादा जोर देता हूँ कि सबको हमको बताना पड़ेगा कि कार्बन फुटप्रिंट क्या चीज होती है और हमें कैसे उसको कम करना है तभी हमको समझ में आएगा कि ये केवल साइंटिस्ट का या टीचर्स का या गवर्नमेंट का काम नहीं है हम सबको उसे कंट्रीब्यूट करना है हम लोग को ये भी बताना पड़ेगा कि डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट इमिशन क्या होते हैं जैसे आपको मैं क्विकली एक एग्जांपल दूंगा कि आज सुबह हम लोग बात कर रहे थे और इट्स वेरी काइंड ऑन पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोफेसर झाला एंड प्रोफेसर देवानी टू इन्वाइट अस की वहाँ बहुत अच्छा है जूनागढ़ लेकिन मैंने लास्ट ईयर एक इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस मिस की थी जो कि यूएस में थी और हम लोग बड़े दुखी थे लेकिन वहां से एक जो साइंटिस्ट है उन्होंने हम लोगों को सबको एक स्लाइड भेजी कि इस कॉन्फ्रेंस को मिस करने का कम से कम एक बहुत बड़ा फायदा हुआ और हम लोगों ने जब पूछा कि क्या तो उन्होंने बोला कि लगभग तीन टन पर साइंटिस्ट हमने सीओ टू बचाया है उस ट्रेवल में तो हर चीज के अपने एडवांटेज और डिसएडवांटेज है हमने जरूर मिलना चाहिए कभी सिमिलरली <coughs> हम मैं, मैं कुछ फुटप्रिंट पर काम करता हूँ और उसमें देखता हूँ तो आज हम जो डिस्कोर्स की बात कर रहे हैं तो एक शर्ट को बनाने में लगभग सत्ताईस सौ लीटर पानी लगता है ओके okay, एक कप चाय यदि हम फेंक दें तो उसमें हम लोग को लगता है कि एक कप चाय हमने वेस्ट की तो लगभग हंड्रेड एम हमने वाटर फेंक दिया है ओके okay, तो लगभग पचास से लेके सत्तर लीटर एक कप चाय और कॉफी का वाटर फुटप्रिंट होता है अभी कहां से आता है क्योंकि चाय के ट्री को हमको पानी देना पड़ेगा कॉफी की प्रोसेसिंग में पानी देना पड़ेगा ये मैं कल पानी की बात कर रहा हूँ सिमिलरली एनर्जी की बात होती सीओ टू की बात होती उसका मतलब ये नहीं कि हम चाय ना पिए हैं कॉफी ना पिए लेकिन इसका निश्चित रूप से एक मतलब जरूर है कि हम आधा कप भी कॉफी या चाय ना फेंके कोई भी हम वन के जी राइस भी ना फेंके ओके इट रिक्वायर्स फ्यू हंड्रेड लीटर्स ऑफ वाटर इफ नॉट फ्यू थाउजेंड टू ग्रो अ बाउल ऑफ राइस इट टेक्स नो लेस देन थ्री डेज ये हमको सेंसिटाइज करना पड़ेगा इनडायरेक्ट एमिशन किसको बोला जाता है इनडायरेक्ट एमिशन उसको बोला जाता है कि हम किसी केमिस्ट्री के बच्चों के साथ जब मैं इंटरेक्ट करता हूँ एनर्जी साइंस के लोगों के साथ में वो बोलते हैं कि सर मेरे घर में मैं एक सिलेंडर एलपीजी का यूज करता हूँ मुझे मालूम है दस के गैस रहती है मुझे उसका फॉर्मूला मालूम है मैं आपको कैलकुलेट करके बता दूंगा कि इतना सीओ होता है बहुत ज्यादा नहीं है लेकिन उनको हमें बताना है कि एल जो प्रोड्यूस होता है उसकी शुरुआत होती है एक्सट्रेक्शन ऑफ क्रूड ऑयल से उसके लिए एनर्जी लगती है देन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ क्रूड ऑयल सऊदी अरेबिया से इंडिया आता है जहाज में पानी के जहाज में शिप में आता है उसका अपना फुटप्रिंट होता है फिर रिफाइनरी में जाता है उसका अपना फुटप्रिंट होता है वहाँ एनर्जी लगती है वो वाटर लगता है इन्वायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन होता है वहां से टैंकर में हमारी सिटी में आता है जैसे नागपुर में हमारा बॉटलिंग प्लांट है उसमें पूरे डीजल यूज करते हैं वहाँ पे इलेक्ट्रिसिटी यूज करते हैं ट्रेन में बॉटलिंग प्लांट में फिर उसको सिलेंडर में डालते हैं वहाँ फिर से एनर्जी यूज होती है वहां से वो ट्रक में डीलर के पास आता है वहां से फिर एक ट्रक में हमारे घर में आता हूँ और घर में मेरी बिल्डिंग में वो लोग लिफ्ट यूज कर सकते हैं सो so, हमको ये सब देखना पड़ेगा कि केवल 10 के जी एल का फॉर्मूला निकाल के उसका कार्बन फुटप्रिंट नहीं बनता है उसका कार्बन फुटप्रिंट बहुत ज्यादा होता है सिमिलरली बच्चे मुझसे आर्ग्यूमेंट करते हैं सर सोलर पैनल का कोई भी कार्बन फुटप्रिंट
कि सर आप सेव टाइगर बोलते हैं सेव पोलर बियर बोलते हैं हम लोगों ने तो कभी देखा नहीं पोलर बियर को तो हाउ डज इट मैटर वी डोंट केयर तो हमको बताना पड़ता है कि जो हमारे स्पीकर आपको बता रहे हैं कि बायोडाइवर्सिटी नाम की कोई चीज होती है यदि आपने टाइगर कुछ तो बड़े स्मार्ट बच्चे होते हैं वो कि फूड चेन में टाइगर सबसे ऊपर आता है सर तो यदि फॉरेस्ट में टाइगर खत्म हो जाएगा तो बाकी जो जानवर उनकी पॉपुलेशन बढ़ जाएंगे इट्स ए ब्रिलियंट आर्ग्यूमेंट then we need to tell them ki if we lose tiger or if we lose polar bear usme hazaro sekro microorganism hote hain aur yadi hum log ne tiger lose kiya to even scientists ko malum nahi ki kaun sa microorganism hai jo keval tiger ki skin pe tiger ki tongue pe survive karta hai wo hum lose karenge chaliye theek hai ki usko bhi lose kar jaye then we do not know ki us microorganism ka dusre microorganism se kya relation hai ho sakta hai hum koi ek microorganism lose kar dein जिसकी वजह से कोई वायरस कंट्रोल हो रहा हो और हमने वो लॉयन और टाइगर लूज किया माइक्रो ऑर्गेजम लूज किया और वायरस जो प्रोलिफरेट करेगा तो ये बहुत अच्छा आस्पेक्ट आप लोगों ने कवर किया हुआ है बायोडाइवर्सिटी का उसको बताना जरूरी है और फाइनली वी नीड टू बी वेरी होपफुल कि इसको अभी भी वक्त बिगड़ा नहीं है और हम लोग सब उसको कर सकते हैं लेकिन मेरे ओपिनियन में प्रिवेंशन विल बी मच मच बेटर देन द क्योर क्योंकि लास्ट में मैं एक स्लाइड दिखाना चाह रहा था अनफॉर्चुनेटली वो लोड नहीं हो रहा है एक गस पेथ करके वर्ल्ड रिसोर्सेज इंस्टीट्यूट के बहुत बड़े साइंटिस्ट हुए हैं ओके और जब वो रिटायर हुए करीब तीस साल की रिसर्च के बाद में उन्होंने सब आस्पेक्ट पे काम किया है और उनका एक बहुत ही सेंसिटिव स्टेटमेंट है वो मैं आपके सामने रीड करूंगा दो तीन लाइन का है गस पेथ से टॉप इन्वायरमेंटल प्रॉब्लम वेयर बायोडाइवर्सिटी लॉस इको सिस्टम को लैप्स एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज I thought that with 30 years of good science, we could address those problems. But I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with those, we need a spiritual and cultural transformation. And unfortunately, we scientists and technologists do not know how to do that. This is his uh, words, which uh, which really hit me hard, and I use during all my presentation. that what your scientists and technocrats are doing let them do they are doing a great job but it is high time that all academicians or teachers right from the primary school they should sensitize everybody this kind of a spiritualism this kind of a uh, awareness about minimum resource consumption okay and be very very responsible like our grandparents were there so i once again compliment both the speakers as well as organizers for this uh, wonderful uh, Uh, event okay and i like the word as i mentioned the discourse and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to share my views also thanks a lot once again uh, thank you very much uh, nitin sir for your uh, micro to macro analytical speech with uh, positive thought aur aapki ye speech aisi thi ki हम लोगों को भी ऐसा लगे कि हम फिर से स्टूडेंट बन जाए और जो स्टूडेंट्स अभी सुन रहे थे रिसर्चर्स सुन रहे थे उसको ऐसा लगे कि आपके यहाँ पढ़ने के लिए आ जाए मैं इनिशियली मैं माफी मांगता हूँ क्योंकि मैक्सिमम लोगों को जो नॉलेज रहता बहुत ज्यादा रहता है लेकिन मैं जो चीज बता रहा हूँ स्टूडेंट फोकस है स्टूडेंट्स के लिए था निश्चित रूप से सही बात है सही बात है सर वो प्योर स्टूडेंट ओरियंटेड स्पीच थी और स्टूडेंट की वजह से तो हम लोग बैठे हुए हैं तो वो इट्स अ मिरेकल स्पीच फ्रॉम यू थैंक यू वेरी मच वंस अगेन सर और uh, आज के बस इस सेशन को कंक्लूड करते हुए मैं डॉक्टर पराग देवानी uh, आज के हमारे चेयरपर्सन uh, डॉक्टर नितिन लाभसेतवर सर हमारे की नोट स्पीकर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर रंजन कुमार पुष्टि सर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर गौरांग रामी सर और आज के हमारे इस सिम्पोजिया uh, के कन्वीनर डॉक्टर जय सी झाला सर आप सबका तह दिल से मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ कि आपने यहाँ आकर स्टूडेंट्स रिसर्चर्स सोशल वर्कर्स प्रोफेसर्स एजुकेशनलिस्ट जो भी हमारे साथ वर्चुअली जुड़े हुए हैं उसका थैंक्स तो है ही लेकिन आप सब ने उन सबको एक नई दिशा दी है नया डायरेक्शन के और जाने के लिए एक इशारा किया हुआ है कि ये जो इशारा है वो एज ए सोशोलॉजिस्ट वो लोग आगे जाके पक्का इंडिया को ये जो एक एक विश्व गुरु बनाने की ये बात है ड्यू टू एनवायरमेंटल सजेशंस और समथिंग uh, ये जो ये सब प्रॉब्लम्स चल रहा है 
कोई क्लाइमेट चेंज का प्रॉब्लम चल रहा है डेवलप्ड और डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज का जो ये चल रहा है पार्टीशन ये सब दूर होगा और विश्व गुरु बनने में इंडिया को ज्यादा देर नहीं लगेगी इसी तरह से सिंपोजियम से वो मेरा पक्का मानना है वंस अगेन आप सब डिग्नीज को थैंक यू वेरी मच और बहुत जल्द हम फिर से हम मिल सके ऑनलाइन या ऑफलाइन मोड में और सभी को आप सबका जो नॉलेज है और उसका लाभ मिल सके ऐसी में भगवान से प्रार्थना करता हूँ थैंक यू वेरी मच जय श्री कृष्ण भारत माता की जय Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you.